I saw you take cocaine out of the evidence room, and I saw you mail it. What is this? I'm your superior officer, Porter. You don't question me. Let's go. Is my father in some kind of trouble? It is possible that he's under investigation. Do you think he's guilty? They've got a desperate soul in cell block nine. He's a cop in here. Look, if you want to kill him, somebody else will. Detective Jonas told me over the phone that I was supposed to talk to him. Uh, my station wagon was vandalized yesterday. Oh, the vandalism. You must be Mona Nelson. Please sit down. We have a few questions that must be answered before we can finish our report. Uh, now, can you tell me just what the vandals did to your car? Okay, uh, I was on the way to the hairdresser. Oh, then you didn't notice the damage right away. Oh, no, no, it wasn't until I turned on the radio. All right, what did they do to the radio? Well, all the buttons have been changed to metal stations. Had you had the car recently washed? Because that could explain that. Oh, so they're undercover at car washes now. Huh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> all right, what else did they do to the car? Well, I noticed that the lighter had been rigged with a laser device. Laser device. I'm going to make note of that in my report. Well, they've already been broadcasting to me through the water pick in my bathroom. I suppose you think that they're from outer space. They're not. Where are they from? They're from Utah. Well, thank you so much for your help. Do you know that man? Yes, I do. He's one of them. <laughs> you evil mutant. Nobody shoot! Don't shoot. There are too many of them. I have a better way. Have you ever seen one of these before? They hate them. The frequencies disrupt their thought channels. Are you crazy? It's a pocket calculator. No, that's the way I've got it rigged to look. It's very sensitive, so be careful. You give me the gun because I know how to handle guns. Take this, and you'll be in total control. All right? Okay, very carefully. Very sensitive. Good. I'll never forget my first rubber room, boy. Abalone diver from Catalina. Came in here with a loaded harpoon gun, screaming because somebody was trying to cut off his air supply. How'd you handle it? Well, by the book. Okay. I talked to him, calmed him down, got his confidence, and then put a clean one right through here. Oh, no. Don't worry about it. He survived. He just has to part his hair a little bit differently. Hi. Hey, just put it right. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> you going up too, huh? Yeah.
guess we were going to four. Me too. It's amazing how much we have in common, huh? It's just a little joke, you know? What are you doing down here? I had to deliver a psychiatric evaluation. Some woman came in, looked at Lane, thought he was an evil mutant, and shot up the whole bullpen. You're kidding me. No, I'm not. Lane is an evil mutant. Where have you been? You're not going to believe this. I just had breakfast with Zaga. The old dog finally threw me a bone. You are looking at this year's organizer of the detective banquet. That guy's not so bad after all. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's this <laughs> He offered it to me last week. No way. Yeah, he did. <laughs> that jerk. No. I have to admire the man. He has superior management skills. What are you talking about? Well, he wanted me. He went to you knowing that you would come to me and I would do the whole thing. Well, I'm not gonna. What do you mean you're not gonna? You're not gonna take the job? I'm not gonna go to you for help, that slime ball. No, he's a good manager. Oh, yeah. Yes, he knew that you would be happy and, of course, I would be happy to help you and everybody becomes a winner. Yeah, well, he wants me, he gets me, nobody else. That guy is a mudhead. Oh, by the way, my name is uh, Tony Jonas. I didn't catch your name. Nina. Does Nina have a last name? Saga. Look at her, ratting on me. Just because I hit on her and called her dad a mudhead is no reason to ruin a promising career. I think she has better things to talk about than you. What could be better than talking about me? Seriously, Tony, I think you're overreacting. Jonas, in here. Now. Excuse me, Chris. We haven't been introduced. My name is Ike Porter. And you're who I am? Yes, but I had no idea that Lieutenant Daughter has such a beautiful Zaga. <laughs> Are you going to hit on me, too? Of course not. <laughs> Look, relax. I uh, didn't say anything about your part. That's very kind of you. No, I don't understand why everyone is so afraid of my father. Well, you obviously see a different side than we do. I don't know. Between the ages of 12 and 18, I thought he was the biggest mudhead in town. Oh, but then you got older and he got smarter. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Do you know who those two men are? Yes, I do. Investigators for Internal Affairs. Is my father in some kind of trouble? Not that I'm aware of. You could tell me, Mr. Porter. I know how the IA works. Those same two guys have been around his neighborhood asking questions. Have you talked to your father about this? I've learned not to ask questions about his work. But he's been... I'm just worried about him. Don't worry. It'll be all right. Well, just do me a favor, okay? If you do hear anything, anything at all, call me. Of course I will. I just spoke to her. She didn't say a word to Zaga. Oh, I was wondering, you know, he didn't say anything. <laughs> you only wanted? Mm -hmm. He's concerned about the invitations to the banquet. Oh, I can help you with that. No, no, I'm fine. I got this cousin who's a printer. He got stuck with 700 birth announcements. Check this out. I white out the store, stick in a badge, bingo. <laughs> this whole thing is a piece of cake. Like, listen to this. I have got this brilliant idea for the centerpieces. A mammoth shotgun rising out of a sea of melon balls. I mean, look at that image. It's like you. No. Hey, whoa, whoa. Pistols and peanuts. Gentlemen, how are you? Why don't you have a seat while we wait for the lieutenant? He'll be in momentarily. Right there. That'd be great. I just have a few calls to make. So tell me, how are things on the 15th floor? I haven't seen the good captain in a dog's age. We keep making dates to play golf, he keeps breaking them, must be very busy. <laughs> Every time we play golf, he has this terrible hook, and I keep trying to fix it for him. What the hell are you doing behind my desk? I was just checking your tape dispenser. I find it low. I'll see clerical about it. Thank you, gentlemen. Come on, we gotta go. Go where? Farm robbery, shots fired, possible hostage, all the things that keep people from drawing their pensions. Let's go. All right. All right in there, listen up. We've been very busy out here. 
Several SWAT teams have arrived along with a whole bunch of detectives in uniform. Don't officers. get involved. I... How about if I count Zog's five daughter is really out. worried about him, and I think there is something strange One. going on. It is none of your business. Listen, if you Two. get between Zaga and internal affairs, one or the other is going to chew you up. Those guys Four. walked in and went right through his desk. Can they five. do that? Yeah, and they're probably going right through your desk right now. Well, what the hell are they looking for? I don't know. Maybe they're okay, working together on something. Again. I don't know. They even questioned his One. neighbors. Why do they do that? Two. Three. You know what? That guy is probably not Five. even in there. Don't do that, Porter. Lane doesn't like surprises. We wanted to talk to you. Lane, you've been yapping at that guy for hours. Has it occurred to you that he might not speak English? Well, let's try this. Je m'appelle Detective Lane. Voulez-vous un squad team most breaking in? It's a language of diplomacy. Okay, okay, hold it. Let the hostage go, but don't try anything. Over here! Over here! Okay, you two, Buster, you get out here. How many of them are there, and how much hardware they got? Two. They got everything but howitzers. Okay, Porter, get this guy to an ambulance and have him taken away for a checkup. No way, he can give us the layout inside. Don't argue, Jonas. Get going, Porter. I don't want a bunch of civilians hanging around. One civilian isn't exactly a crowd. Not one, two, you know what I mean? Well, he's not coming out. Well, then I guess that means we'll have to go in and get him. Okay, boys, we're going in. Move it. Around the back, around the back. You guys go around back. Go. Come on, come on. What the hell is going on here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. If that guy's the hostage, it's okay, it's okay. Porter's in the ambulance getting a statement from the guy. All we have to do is get a hold of Porter. Come on. What's wrong? I thought you were in the ambulance getting that report. No, I got it before he left. He wasn't feeling well. All units in the vicinity, man fleeing from ambulance at 3rd and Dunlow. Be advised, suspect is not a patient. I was the closest to him, and that is not what he looked like. I'm a trained observer, Porter. One glance at a suspect, and he's mine. Well, that's good, Lane. I'm glad to hear that. Good. What? What do you mean the sheriff's got it? Don't we always use the Kiwanis Club? They do? They do, really? What's the number there? Uh-huh. Okay, thanks a lot. Ike, you ever hear of the Bang High restaurant? Uh, we're still working on the nostrils, sir, but I think we're finally getting some. If you'd nailed the guy, instead of helping him get away, we'd be getting somewhere around. Hi, Jimmy. Yeah. Is the Academy Gymnasium available for a banquet on the 20th? Meter mates? What do you mean? They have nothing to celebrate meter mates. Nothing. How's it going? Bye, honey. Just fine, sir. I'm trying to keep away from the usual places. Good. Just don't wait too long. The good spots get booked up. Right. Sonny, I can make a few calls. Now, maybe if I started with the food. But the problem there is I want the food to go with the place. No one wants to luau in a Swedish restaurant. I had a great caterer when I was in public affairs. I could dig up the number and I could... No, no, I can handle it, Ike. Wait till you hear who I have got for entertainment. Albino Collins and his all-girl blues band. Sounds different. Did I hear something about entertainment, Jonas? Yeah, I'm working on it, Lane. Yeah, well, you haven't called her yet. Called who? Well, my cousin, Jenny, the accordion player. She's played at every detective banquet for the last five years. She plays the accordion? Right. Go with your instincts, Tony. Mark! Mark! 
Carter, is that really you? Ike! <laughs> I never expected to see a golfer like you in the woods. Believe me, I spent a lot of my time here. Yeah, you still have that famous hook, huh? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen my ball? I usually land about here. No, actually, I've been looking for my own. You know, I was thinking about you today. Yeah. Yes, I happen to see a couple of your men down in our office. Not actually in our office, in Marco Zaga's office. You know Marco. Look, Ike, you know IA business is confidential. You're not supposed to ask me any questions. I can't ask you if you do. Then Zaga is under investigation. I didn't say that. Listen, I guess I'd better drop a ball and take the penalty stroke. Mark! I found your ball! Keep it! Mike, I'm taking a vote here. Pigs with or without blankets. What? You know, little buns, no buns. Oh, I don't care. One more, I don't care. Okay. Where have you been anyway? I've been trying to find out if IA is investigating Zaga, but I'm not getting anywhere. And why would you do that? His daughter was concerned, and I thought I would help her out. Mm -hmm. So you went up to the head of IA and said, Hi, are you investigating my boss? No, I was a little more subtle than that. Mike. I feel like I'm trying to convince a puppy not to chase cars. If you catch one, you'll be sorry. Yep. Does that look like a happy man? No, but that never looks like a happy man. Ike, please, steer clear of IA. I'll steer clear of IA, but I'm going to do my own surveillance on Zaga. No, 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 no. I'm your partner. Remember, if IA catches you, they nail me too. Which is a good reason for you to show me everything you know about surveillance. I cannot believe I just walked up four flights of stairs on my day off. Yeah, well, he's working on his day off. Well, he probably needs a rest. No, no. So do I. No, no, come on. Come on. Come on. I can't believe I saw Zaga taking the cocaine. 
I don't know. He took enough dope out of there to fuel a 60s rock revival concert. But, you know, that's an evidence room. Isn't somebody going to inventory there? I mean, aren't they going to find that out? Are you kidding me? There's a ton of coke down there. It'd take him a year to figure out something was missing. Mm-hmm. Can I talk to you? Well, oh, certainly. Come on in. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe this isn't a good time. Relax. I'm just on my way out the door. Ike, I'll see you in the morning. You have to leave? Yeah, don't be late. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not as bad as you think. I've known a lot of Tonys in my life. Glib, sarcastic, bend the system every way they can. That's Tony, but you're not here about him. No, I was hoping that you could tell me something more about why the I is after my father. I really, uh... Mr. Porter, anything. I'm going to tell you something. I'm just going to tell you. Tony and I saw your father doing something that some people could consider seriously compromising. And it is possible that he's under investigation. Do you think he's guilty? I have no way of knowing. And I'm not going to the IA, and neither is Tony. Look, I know you have to do what you have to do. But will you please talk to my father, too? Listen to his side of the story. Help him. Oh, no, 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 thank you. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. No, you want to speak to my partner, Detective Jonas, and he'll be here any minute. No. There he is. Detective Jonas. Why are you always late? I have to talk to you. Yeah, oh, well, Wayne's cousin Jeannie cornered me in the locker room. What can I say? <laughs> Uh, I told you that one last year. Uh-huh. People threw money. Yeah, Ginny, I love it. I love the whole concept. It's just that I was looking more for a, a band sound, you know, something people could dance to. Dance? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Ginny, Ginny, that's great. I, I get the idea. I get the idea. And look, Detective Jonas, how long do I have to wait? And my Venus de Milo is starting to look like twins. I'll get right... Tony, Tony, what? Well, fat day's been done today. I've got to go see Lieutenant Zaga. Oh, no, no, I can want you to try these little cheese balls. I had oh, ordered for special. Yeah, no. I, there's a... It's like a Chinese uh, hash brown. Come in. Good morning, sir. What do you want, Porter? Well? Can we talk friend to friend? Why? Look, if you've got a personal problem, go see the shrink. What I have to say doesn't concern me, it concerns you. I saw you take cocaine out of the evidence room and I saw you mail it. Is that so? I don't know what to do. If you're in trouble, I'd like to offer my help. <laughs> if you weren't such a rookie, I'd be angry. That was evidence in the Bronowski case. The DA in San Diego needed it. That doesn't explain why the internal affairs men were here the other day. What is this? I'm your superior officer, Porter. You don't question me. Yes, sir. But if you look at it from my point of view, I think... You think too much. We have nothing to talk about. <laughs> I definitely think these have potential. Yes, I'll get back to you on those. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, thank you. Yeah, take care. Mm. Ah, let me guess. He told you that it was none of your business. No, he told me it was evidence in the Bronowski case and that it was needed down in San Diego. Same thing. Come on, you guys, saddle up. We got a tip on the guy that held himself hostage. Somebody recognize the picture? Some snitch that runs a newspaper stand downtown, so I'm walking into the Ambassador Hotel. Police. Is this guy staying here? Uh, no. And I don't believe Carl Malden ever stayed here. You can tell Matucci to think twice before cutting off his ear. <laughs> this place is not bad. Wonder if they can handle a banker. Not bad. No, Porter's right. The cheaper the place, the more you can afford to pay the entertainment. Jenny can finally afford to get a professional tuner for her accordion. Look, Lane, I'm calling the manager, okay? So wait a minute. Let me give you a piece of advice about talking to managers. Don't talk to the manager. Because he'll sometimes offer you a deal he can't back up. Talk directly to the chef. 
Also, you have to find out exactly how many men they're going to give you that night. Ike, Ike. I'm handling this, okay? I've had parties before. Fantastic parties, as a matter of fact. Oh, I'm very sure. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Hey, guy. You know where the manager is? Yo. Hello. That's him. What? You That's are... him? Yeah. Her. I apprehended this alleged perpetrator making egress from the building. Way to go, Porter. Lieutenant Zog is going to be stoked when he finds out I got him. If he even notices, he's kind of preoccupied. What's he got to worry about? He doesn't have himself for a boss. He's working on the Brunowski case. Brunowski? There's no Brunowski case. Are you sure? I check out every new right case. Here, if it's up to my standards, I take it for myself. I know what you think. Zaga lied to me. He didn't rush in here on the weekend to send some evidence on the Bronowski case to San Diego to the DA. Maybe Lane got the name of the case wrong. Maybe Bronowski is the suspect and Lane only knows the name of the victim. I have 32. Hey, Marty. I'd like to book this shoe as evidence, Marty. You better hold on to that. It's going to be another hour or so. I'll tell you what. You hold on to it. I'll be back in an hour to do the paperwork. Okay. See you, Marty. Apparently, they're doing an inventory of the evidence room. Good. Little spring cleaning never hurt anybody. You're evading the issue. You're trying not to see things. What are we going to do? Do? We do what we do. We do what we do? Yeah. Other people do what they do. We do what we do. And everybody does something they can do something about. You got that? No, I don't got that. Uh, Ike, you went to Zaga with the problem, okay? He gave you an evasive answer. What he's trying to tell you is whatever the hell is really going on, he's handling it. I don't think he's handling it. His daughter Nina doesn't think he's handling Ike, it. Ike, don't be ridiculous. I'm sure Zaga has everything under control. What are the charges? They say he took five pounds of cocaine from the evidence room and nailed it somewhere. Where is it? Zaga's not talking. After this, why don't you sing Found a Peanut? What's the matter? You one of those funny guys? There's two types of guys that don't make it in here. Funny guys and cops. What'd you do to get here, Zono? Ride off on somebody's exercise bicycle? Okay, Zaga. You got a visitor. Not yet. 
I've been trying ever since you called me, but he's not at the office and he doesn't answer at his house. Keep at it. I'm sure he'll be around this afternoon. So, Daddy, what's happening? Nothing. I'm undercover. Don't worry. If you're covering for somebody, Daddy, it's not worth it. There's nothing to worry about. I've been working with Carter and IA to nail some dirty cops. By going to jail on a drug charge? We had to make sure two of Carter's men saw me do something illegal. What he thought they'd do is ask me for hush money. Obviously they didn't. Well, no. They arrested me instead. Well, doesn't that mean they're honest? No, they're dirty. But they're a lot cleverer than Carter thought. Just get in touch with Carter like I asked you to, okay? Okay, okay. I can't reach Carter anywhere, Detective Porter. You've got to help me. All right. I'm going to have to call Tony, and we're going to get together and discuss it and get to the bottom of this. I'd really rather not have him involved. And considering the seriousness of this business, don't you think you're carrying a grudge too far? Well, look, I'm sure he's a good cop, but the last thing I need right now is a good cop. I need someone like you. What's that? You know what I mean. It's cops who got my father into this. You're different. Dad even talked to me about you. You don't act like the others. You don't think like they do. I don't know why you have this chip on your shoulder, but I can tell you that it's much more complicated than you imagine. All I see is that my father wasted his life with a bunch of men who are narrow-minded, self-righteous, and proud of it. The most important thing to them is being one of the boys. He's not one of the boys, and neither are you. You know as well as I do that no one's going to believe him. Has it ever occurred to you that Carter might have been the one who framed him? Nina, Mark Carter is my friend for many years. There's no way he would be a part of this. I know him too well. Well, then where is he? Maybe we ought to call the jail. Carter probably found out and went down there himself. No, I already called. Zaga's having breakfast. No. Yes. Then we'll have to face him with powdered eggs and cold coffee under his belt. They don't let him wear belts, remember? Uh, maybe this is the one. Okay. Morning. Good morning. We're Detectives Porter and Jonas. Come on, guys. Give me a break. Haven't even made the coffee yet. Uh, well, this is kind of urgent. Well, then, you really better wait, because I move a lot faster after I have a cup of coffee. We have to talk to Captain Carter right away. You snitches or culprits? I beg your pardon? Snitches go to Cooper. Culprits go to Robinson this week. We're not snitches or culprits. We would just like to talk to the head man. Captain Carter is away on special assignment and cannot be reached. So if you've got business with internal affairs, talk to Cooper or Robertson. I can't believe that Captain Carter hasn't left you instructions as to how he can be contacted. It's imperative that we speak to him. Gentlemen, you want espresso? You come to me. You want information? Talk to Cooper or Robertson. Good. Where are they? At the courthouse, testifying at the prelim of a crooked lieutenant. Uh -huh. Thank you. Outside the courtroom, as Lieutenant Marco Zaga, the highest ranking local police official to be charged with corruption in 20 years, was indicted today on a series of charges ranging from grand theft to trafficking in narcotics. And because of the nature of the case, bail was set at a half million dollars. I guess Carter didn't show. Yeah. Yeah, so much for our wonderful system of justice and the great men who run it. Oh, no, it's just a case of bad timing. Carter went on assignment, and all we got to do is keep checking around, and we'll find him. On assignment, and no one can reach him. Yeah. Well, that's pretty clear. I don't understand. But don't you see? He's asked my father to take drugs from an evidence room. Now he's off selling them while my father goes to jail. I know you're upset, but that cannot be what happened. I thought you were different. That you knew something about people. Where are you going? I do know something about people. And I'm telling you, right now she's about to do something that we're all going to regret. Carter's home, she could be walking into a lot of trouble. I mean, what if he did set her dad up? I've known this man for 20 years. Besides, we're here. Yeah. Oh, great. Breaking and entering. <laughs> well, they can start
start holding the Zaga family reunions at Leavenworth. I didn't hear a fight, did you? She couldn't have done all this by herself. No, somebody else must be in here. <laughs> Not like you want to find anything. We'd better get out of here because the boys from the coroner's office are going to get here any minute. Yeah. Yeah, but they're tampering with evidence and leaving fingerprints. No, we're not. We're not touching anything. Are we? No, no, we're not. Listen, I don't even know what we're looking for. I, I don't either, but somebody wants something out of this house, and that something could clear Zelda. Tony, I owe you an apology. Why? I had you figured wrong. What, because it helped you burglarize a captain's house? So far, it's done a lot of good. Yeah, but you're breaking rules here. I didn't expect that. And to help my father? That's a good point. Come over here. What? Look at this. It's the two IA guys, Robertson and Cooper. Looks like they're taking a bribe. Yeah, I agree. That's what it is. But a good lawyer can make anything out of that he wants to. Yeah, but it might prove my father's innocent. Like... It's time to come clean with Saga. And vice versa. Yeah. Hey, Essie. Come here. Come here. What do you want? Come here. I just found out there's a cop in here. You mean a guard? No! A cop! Tell the guys in the next cell. Why? Why? Because he's a cop, so he don't get out. Look, if you want to kill him, somebody else will. Okay. That's it for the report. No doubt they'll take a look at everything and decide that he was killed by burglars. It's time to talk to Zaga. Yeah, we got a problem there, Ike. If two cops come to visit, the other prisoners are going to figure out that he's a cop, too. Maybe not. Father. Father, am I glad to see you. Well, I'm glad to see you too, my son. No, no, wait, wait. No, I can't wait. I've got a desperate soul in cell block nine. Oh, but I want you to hear my confession. Oh, I can't. I can't do that, son. No, not at all. No, Robert, I'm paying for this crime, but I did a lot of crimes they never caught me for, and I want to wipe the slate clean. Uh, let me talk to the father about this. Just one moment. Oh. Issue, my son. Mm, check it out. What do I do? A cop takes his confession. Zog is not going any place. We can solve 20 crimes in 10 minutes. Perish that thought forever. You win. Uh, as my assistant brother Alphonse says, this fellow that we're going to go see is right near the end, and I've got to see him right away. But I'm going to send someone to you who's going to make you feel much, much better, oh. and you'll find solace for well, you. Well, 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 how about some spiritual guidance? Uh, listen, I have a lot of burning questions about the afterlife that I need answered uh, right away. The afterlife, my son. Well, that's two years in the seminary alone. But don't you think you've got enough trouble with the here and now? Oh, you're right, Father. Was I destined to be a sociopath? Or did I have free will? Well, we have an exorcism in cell block nine that just can't wait. Uh, have a nice day. Hello. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Why are you wearing that getup? We had a few setbacks, sir. Setbacks? I could have tunneled out by now. Well, Carter wasn't at his office, and we couldn't reach him at his home phone, and we really didn't... All right, let's pick up my belongings and get out of here. Sir, you might want to sit down for this one. We found Captain Carter. Right. He was dead. Dead. How? Well, it wasn't very pretty. He was in a refrigerator. But the coroner said the lab results might be exceptionally good. I'm in trouble. Yes, sir, you are. I won't deny that. But at least you have two people who know you're innocent, and we will not give up. I'm doomed. Look at it this way, sir.
Carter may be dead, but he was right. Now, being right might not be much of a consolation, but you were right, too, and at least you're not dead. Right about what? Robertson and Cooper, they're dirty. I know they're dirty. What do we do about it? Okay, let me think. They found out we were on to them, so they killed Carter and arrested me. They've already got everything they want, except one thing. Well, you mean the pictures? They don't prove much. They're narcotics. If you remember, I took about $200,000 worth from the evidence room. Where is it? I mailed it to a post office box in Carter's name. Everything goes through the main post office sorting center. You still have time. Hello. I need to know about mail for box 15A23. I'm a police officer, and I'm interested in the package. It's not a bomb, is it? Because if it's a bomb, i got to evacuate the building. No, it's not a bomb. Radioactive materials? Chemicals, solvents, fireworks, contaminants or pollutants? Nothing like that. And why are you guys all hanging around? Paul, who else has been here? There are two detectives in the back with a supervisor. What is it, your paychecks? No, do you have another supervisor who could take us back there? Zip on point uh, one. Oh, okay. 08742, Palm Beach. We'll lay it off the fourth block. Pick up that. Uh, Cambria. Uh, All right, sir, thank you. You just step out of the way. Things could get bad. Right there. Right there. I got a plan. What? Mike, can I hop along Cassidy? We sneak up on the bad guys behind our horses. You got a better idea? I can't see a thing. I'll direct you. Okay, let's go. Just keep going straight. Hold it. Okay, big box. Stop. Let's get out of here. Yeah. They found it. Hey, you can't take that. You need a federal warrant. Hold it right there! You can handcuff yourselves and read yourselves your rights on the way to the station. That looks like an admission of guilt to me. Double sudden death playoff. We caught these two at drugs stolen from the evidence room. They're Zaga's partners. Zaga wouldn't go partners with those two on an ant farm. It's these guys. Bye bye. Get them out of here. Nice job, Gary. Not bad, Lane. Not bad at all. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> These are the worst things I have ever eaten in my life. 
How's the clam pass? Not bad. He hates them. Oh, I blew it. The food was lousy. Albino Conway didn't show and everybody's leaving. I'm dead. Hey, Jonas. Great job. This is a terrific party. <laughs> when are we going to roll up the rug and do a little dancing? Well, the band should be here any minute, sir. All right. I'm going to go over there and have a few more clam puffs. I'll be right there, Dad. I just wanted to say thanks. You don't have to. But I mean it. And me, we'll bump into each other in an elevator sometime. Hmm. I promise I'll behave myself. What the hell am I going to do about music? Well, I can't sit here all night and watch this thing go down the tubes. The kid is dying. Whoa, whoa, where are you going? Tony, no offense, but your entertainment. Well, are you going to go out and grab some old guys who play clarinets and stuff? Well, I happen to like old guys who play clarinets, but if you want me to get something more interesting, I'll try. <laughs> Anything you come up with will be just fine, Ike. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked on as something shocking. Now heaven knows anything goes. May I say before this medley spins to a close, I want you to know anything goes. Next. I'm the oldest rookie. I'm going on the face. Not in my belief, of course, you're not. Come on, Porter, move it! You're never going to this academy! You hope to get changed tonight. I don't... Oh! I think you're going to work out just fine. They think he's been shot. What do you mean we're going to be detected? We're going to be detected. Sullivan. And I'm Harry Smith. For information, engaging conversation, and much more, join us for CBS This Morning, beginning Monday. Next, the network television premiere, The Man of the Century, the film of the decade, winner of eight Academy Awards, Gandhi.